Hello and welcome back to Flashy and Puddles. I'm your host, Puddles. So, you just got your first character to 110? Good job! Now it's time to do mythic dungeons, raids, and PvP, right? Well, not quite yet. Once you hit 110, you're not even halfway through this expansion's content, and on top of that, you're not even close to geared enough to do any of the endgame stuff. Well, what's a new player to do? It seems like a daunting challenge to go from low 800 or high 700 item level to mid-low 900 item level, and another challenge to finish all of the current content. But fear not! We're going to give you a quick rundown of what you should do once you hit 110 and what order you should do it in. Of course, you're free to do whatever you want in whatever order you want, but this is a fairly good order to do it in. For this guide, I'm going to assume that this is your first 110 and therefore have no buy non account tokens. If this is not the case, use these tokens first for a free piece of item level 880 gear. Now, as soon as you hit 110, you will need to do three quick things before you do anything else. First, go to Khadgar and Dalaran. He will have some quests for you and will give you an item called Flightmaster's Whistle. This item is incredibly useful until you get Legion flying, as it will readily teleport you to the nearest Flightmaster. While in Dalaran, you should also talk to Archmage Landalock. He will sell you up to three seals of Broken Fate per week. These seals can be used for re-rolling loot on bosses, which is really helpful while gearing. Make sure to get all three seals per week from him. This count resets every Tuesday. You should also hit up Archmage Timir, as he gives a weekly bonus quest that will reward you with some decent gear. As a new 110, you should be able to complete all of these quests, except for Pet Battle, Arena, and Mythic Week. The next stop is your Order Hall. They will give you a helmet for just reaching 110. It starts out at item level 810, but can be upgraded to 830 for really cheap. You should therefore immediately upgrade this to 830. While in your order hall, check on your class campaign advancement in your order hall upgrades, as new stuff for both of these will unlock at 110. So to start off, you need to finish the basic overworld quest line for all four zones on the Broken Isles. This will be important for later quest lines and will also provide you with four pieces of item level 800 gear, which is a good start with the process of gearing up. Not to mention that completing every zone on the Broken Isles is a requirement for unlocking Legion Flying. Then it's back to your class hall to do as much stuff in the campaign as possible before it becomes time-gated with follower missions. Even when this happens and you move on to the next step, you should always send your followers on these missions as soon as they become available. There will be a quest in your class campaign to complete a certain number of world quests, so I guess that this is a good place to talk about them. World quests are spread out through all Legion zones and each day there will be a new emissary available. If you complete 4 quests in the Emissary Zone, you will be able to turn them in for bonus loot and a decent amount of AP. The exception to this being the Wardens and the Kirin Tor, as they do not have a set zone and are scattered throughout the Broken Isles. Anyway, going back to the guide, this is where things split into a few different paths that you could take and it all depends on what you want to prioritize. As far as I see it, there are three ways that a person might want to experience being a new 110. The first is going through the story in proper chronological order. If you want to do this, then your next step is to head down to Suramar. You should already have a quest from Khadgar to start this off. If you want to prioritize getting flying or gearing up first, I recommend going to the Broken Shore. Again, Khadgar should have already provided you with a quest to do so. After this, for those of you who want to do the story in order, head on over to the Broken Shore. For those of you who want flying first, go to Suramar. With your new gear from the Broken Shore, you should be able to blast your way through Suramar with no problem. For those of you interested solely in gearing up, you're going to Argus, which Velen should have a quest for you already. Our last stop for people doing the content in order, and for our flying friends, is Argus. And for our gearing friends, head to Suramar. Now, let's go over why I chose this order. For the chronological one, that's pretty self-explanatory, it's just the order in which the content came out. For the gearing one, I recommend starting on the Broken Shore rather than jumping right into Argus, as this is a massive difficulty increase, and you won't be able to do all that well until you're at least item level 850, which you should be able to get fairly easily on the Broken Shore with the Dauntless tokens available from War Mage Kathleen. Once you have this item level, you can shoot off to Argus and start working on better gear with Veiled Argonite, which I'll get to in a few minutes. After finishing Argus, you should just get Suramar out of the way, as it rewards a decent amount of AP and helps you get flying, which is a lot more useful than you may think it is. For flying, the reason why I say Broken Shore first is the same as the gearing one. You can get gear a lot faster on the Broken Shore than you can in Suramar, which really helps with questing, especially in Suramar City. 
Completing both the Suramar storyline and the Broken Shore storylines are requirements for getting flying anyway. Then it's off to Argus to get geared up. And don't forget while you're doing all of this to finish your class hall campaign, as this is a requirement for the Broken Shore questline. Now at some point in all of this, you will hit item level 825, and can start on looking for Raid, otherwise known as LFR. I recommend clearing as much of LFR as you can every week while trying to get geared up. It's super simple and no one really minds carrying low people as most of them outgear the content anyway. This is also a nice introduction to raiding, but it's not really like regular raiding, which I will be talking about in next week's video, Intro to Raiding. Alright, cool. But with all of that, you're still probably only high 800s, low 900s, and you really want to raid or PvP. Well, this is where the Argus catch-up system of Veiled Argonite comes in. In short, you can use Veiled Argonite to purchase eye level 910 gear from a vendor on board the Vindicar. This is a nice and easy way to gear up your character, and unlike Nether Shards from the Broken Shore, there's no other use for this currency. Since this is going to be a really important currency, I recommend showing it on your backpack. To do so, press Shift C to open your currency page, click on Veiled Argonite, and select Show on Backpack. Keep in mind that you can only display three currencies at a time on your backpack in addition to your gold, which is always displayed on your backpack. So, how does one gather this super useful currency? Every chest and rare spawn in Argus will drop some amount of Veiled Argonite. In addition, Illidan and Turalyon will both give a quest once a week, which will reward a decent amount of Argonite. You also get some from the Emissary Caches from both Argus factions and completing Invasion Points on Argus. Speaking of Invasion Points, once a week there will be a Greater Invasion on Argus. You want to do this every single week and always use a bonus roll on it. These bosses will drop item level 930 gear, so it's well worth your bonus roll. You will need to find a group to take them down though. To do this, open the Group Finder with I, select the Pre-Made Groups, select Custom, and search for the boss's name. Click on a group that looks good and sign up. Well that's all good, but there's still one more source of gear that we should talk about before we jump into raiding. Mythic Dungeons. At first glance, Mythic Dungeons just seem like regular dungeons, but where everything hits harder. Then you start to look at the differences and you can see that they're not really that alike at all. The first difference is that there is no way to automatically group up for Mythic Dungeons. You either need to group up with friends, or manually use the group finder. The second difference is that Mythic Dungeons have levels. They start at plus zero, which is the baseline Mythic Dungeon, and anyone can run any plus zero provided they have the correct item level. After your first Mythic Dungeon of the week, you will be rewarded with a Mythic Keystone, which lets you into higher level Mythic Dungeons, referred to as Mythic Plus or M Plus. This keystone will be for a specific dungeon and difficulty, however you do not need to use your keystone to get into a Mythic Plus. For instance, let's say that my keystone this week was for Vault of the Wardens plus 10. However, a group of my friends wanted to go to plus 7 Eye of Azara. I could still go with this group, provided that one of them has the correct keystone. Also, the person who uses the keystone will get a new keystone at the end of the dungeon that will either be higher or lower level than the one that they used depending on how quickly the group gets through. The third difference is that there is a time limit on all Mythic Plus dungeons. Although you can still complete the dungeon after the time limit has expired, you won't be able to upgrade your keystone unless gear will drop. As you may have noticed from the picture of my keystone, there are also what's known as affixes on higher level Mythic dungeons. The first affix occurring at plus 4, the second at plus 7, and the third at plus 10. These affixes add new mechanics to the dungeon, but I'm not really going to go into depth about what they do here. There's a website called Mythic Plus that is chock full of information about the Mythic Plus system, and I will leave that link in the description. So anyway, how does this help with trying to gear up? Well, Mythic Plus dungeons will drop higher and higher levels of gear, depending on the level of the dungeon. In other words, you'll get a lot better gear from completing a plus 10 than you will from completing a plus 5. Also, if you complete a Mythic Plus dungeon, even if it's not within the time limit, you will get a chest in your order hall on Tuesday with a Titan Forged piece of gear from the highest Mythic Plus you completed the previous week. Again, even if it's not within the time limit. Cool, so what about raiding? Well, I'm going to have an entire video dedicated to raiding coming out next week, so stay tuned for that. Well that's all for this video. If you have any questions or you feel like I didn't cover something correctly, please leave a comment down below. If you like what I'm doing and would like to see more of it, please like and subscribe. Other than that, 
Have a wonderful day, everyone.